Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to iTrack App Reviewers. In this video, I have a quick little Mac app review for Pixelmator, so let's get right into this. So when you start it up, this is what you see. You got create new image, open existing image, or open recent. I'm just going to create a new one. Uh, you can do a custom preset. I'll just set one to iPhone desktop, just for the heck of it, with 72 pixels per inch. So let's just click OK. And here we go. I can make it larger if I want. I can even put it into full screen mode, which is pretty cool. Keeps everything like organized and stuff. Helps you stay focused on what you're doing. But for the sake of this video, I'm not going to do that. So over here, you got your tools. Over here, you got your brushes. And you can edit them, of course. And then you've got your layers over here. You can change opacity. You can change the blending to whatever these are. I don't use this a whole lot. I just use it for like when I'm making apps and stuff, which I'm just starting to get into. So. Um, yeah, I don't know what a lot of these do, but I just leave it on normal. Uh, <clears throat> right now I've got this little dropper selected so you can, uh, it shows different colors here. Let's get a brush going. Let's change it to a little darker. Like that. Um, that's kind of a cool brush, but I'm going to put on this one. And you can preview them right here, actually. Yeah, I'll use this one. So it's just a normal brush. And then if I use this dropper like I was doing before, it really shows you, um, it zooms in very far and can uh, help you pinpoint exactly what color you want to use so for like dropping and stuff so let's if I click on this little down thing I can change to some different shapes I can do a rounded rectangle shape like that um, I can do a couple different things star shape if you want to do that uh, let's see text now this is a big plus to this um, <clears throat> excuse me I've used GIMP before and text editing or putting in text is uh, fa fairly difficult to like go back in and edit it later which I tend to do a lot so if I just put hi YouTube um, it's great I can just quickly go back and edit it if I want it's very easy to select and stuff so that's just a big plus then I can of course go through and hide some of these layers if I just want to see what it would look like without it uh, yeah, so up here in this color menu, of course, you've got your different um, sliders here. You can change colors like this and all these different views and the crayon view and stuff like that. So let's do, let's show the fill. So if you want to fill something, I normally have a bit of trouble doing this. There we go. I usually forget to select that background, but there we go. And because I had that cool brush, it kind of has this like little tapered edge to it makes it look kind of neat so I'll show you a different brush here let's get the brush going and let's do a different color so this is actually like a leaf brush let's do a I mean there's just a bunch of different brushes to choose from in here now if you hit this little cog thing down here these are just the default ones there's abstract brushes uh, there's all kinds of different ones to mess around with so that's a uh, really cool added feature. I mean, there's just so many different brushes. So I'm just going to go back to default. So there's a lot of things to do with this app. Um, I can uh, import, I can export, uh, usually just export as PNG file because that's widely accepted by most applications. Um, then there's the eraser, of course. It's very fine. I'll just make it a little bigger. So I can erase. I've got a cool brush selected here. Should have switch that but there we go makes it transparent that's how you set a transparency as far as I know setting transparency is kind of difficult with this app um, as far as I know the only way is to like zoom in really far and then like erase just around the parts that you want um, transparent as far as I know that's the best way to do it right now if you have better suggestions then leave it down below but uh, I looked for different things like there's different ways to do it in like Photoshop and stuff and I don't have the full version of Photoshop I have the trial and I like this a lot better anyway just because of its layout but uh, it seems to be easier to set transparencies and stuff in Photoshop for now but I'm sure they'll change that if that really is a problem maybe I'm just doing it wrong uh, like I said leave it down below in the descriptions if you have any suggestions so here's a gradient tool I can uh, change stuff like that different preset colors and uh, stuff so yeah you can make it look really cool and that's pretty much it. Of course, uh, I don't use a lot of these, so I don't know what some of these do. Uh, but I know like the general like selection tools, like if you're using that, or uh, I don't really know what this does. I think it cuts stuff, but uh, I don't know. 
slice one. I don't really know what that is, but uh, I'll just go through a couple of these just to show you what they are. Maybe you know what they are. Um, so let's see. Up here we got the magic wand tool. Um, you can move stuff around. I think is this. Yeah, that's the burn tool. I think they have um, a clone stamp tool, and this is a red eye tool, which is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, definitely check this app out, guys. It's definitely worth the money. It's got a bunch of features, and in my opinion, it's right on par with Photoshop, uh, at least Elements version. Like, I have the trial version, and I don't do advanced editing and stuff, but just for normal, everyday use, this thing is great, and it's a lot cheaper than Photoshop, so definitely check this one out. I'll have a link in the description if you want to, and uh, yeah, that's about it. See you guys in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Peace.